So ladies and gentlemen, wow, that Joker 2 fully ado trailer, that was something. The cinematography from Lawrence Schur looking freaking top notch to the performances seemingly as engrossing as the first film. The plot ever so intriguing here. So guys, you know what we're doing in this video. I have been scouring this trailer and I mean shot by shot. So if you couldn't tell already by the video length, we're going to get into it quite a bit. We're going to do a breakdown of the scenes covering the clues that we get about the plot, certain connections that I found that again are super intriguing. And I really do recommend sticking around for the whole of this video because we are doing a deep dive and I can't wait for you guys to just offer your thoughts on some of the things that we found out through what this trailer shows us. Connecting it to Arthur's escape from Arkham, the Superior Court of God, them. There's a little explosion that happens there. All good things like that. So right away, we see that the trailer opens up with the camera zooming out of Arthur Fleck's cell. The guard asking, of course, hey Fleck, you got a joke for us today? I mean, I, I, I see what you did there. As we hear the beginning notes of what the world needs now is love, which I have to say is a fantastic song choice for this trailer. Will this be one of the musical numbers in the film? Maybe, may maybe not. But we actually have got a shot of Arthur Fleck's cell in in Arkham Asylum before from Todd Phillips. And it actually showed the cell number E258, which is actually a reference directly to the Batman comic issue 258, which is titled Threat of the Two headed coin. And yes, you may have guessed it, that is a reference to Harvey Dent, and he's in that comic book. And let's just say that, that we know Harvey Dent is in this movie at the Superior Court of Gotham. More on that in a little bit with how that probably comes into play, and it's not too hard to guess given all the crimes that Arthur Fleck committed in the first movie. We then see Arthur being escorted by multiple Arkham guards here, and he spots Harleen Quinzel singing among other patients and at Arkham State Hospital, and, and they both seem to catch each other's eyes at this moment. Now, this actually matches up to rumors, and this may sound familiar to those of you who have been on the channel for quite a while because we've been covering these rumors for a very long time now, that Harleen Quinzel's origin would be adapted a little bit, well, not a little bit, but quite differently in this movie, and it is an Elseworlds movie after all, in where she's actually an inmate who bonds with Arthur over music as patients in the hospital rather than that of his psychiatrist. We then hear perhaps even from the teacher of the music therapy class that we use music to make us whole to balance the fractures within ourselves as we see Arthur smoking in his cell at night and while he's being escorted through the grounds of Arkham. Now those lines are pretty significant with regards to I guess the whole shared madness, the folie de, if you will, that Harleen and Arthur will experience as they bond over that music which will involve by many of the shared delusional scenes that we see in this trailer to that of the musical stage like numbers. Which will also I'm sure paint many scenes in the movie with an unreliable narration just like the first film with Arthur's point of view not necessarily reflecting reality. It's just this time you now need to toss in the unreliable perspective and narration from that of Harleen Quinzel as well and that's how you get the shared madness, the Joker 2 fully a deux. And I know, I know I'm probably butchering the, the title. I, I, people point it out every freaking time. I, I get it. I get it. Uh, leave a like for every single time I butcher it. But of course, music is going to be quite a big part in this film. We do know there will be influences from Judy Garland, uh, Fred Astaire with songs like That's Entertainment and Be a Clown, among many others. Now, this is when we hear Harleen in the trailer after this saying that she's a nobody. I haven't done anything with my life like you have. And that's just interesting in how she's like, oh, Arthur Fleck, you know, you've done something with your life. I mean, I, I guess you could say say the events of the first movie uh, is somewhat descriptive of that. And this is where, as I was just saying with the glimpses of perspectives offered to us in the movie and how, you know, just trying to follow the timelines of what would be deemed as the reliable narration of this movie, it just kind of gets into a little bit of a down the rabbit hole situation of trying to make sense of it all. So let's just peek into that for a second because that was a big part of the first movie and obviously they're going to double down on that in terms of what 
what is real, what isn't so real, what are the, I guess you could say, canonical events that actually unfold in this second film. So, you know, here we see Harleen walking up these steps. The same steps that we see Arthur walking up in the first film. There's somewhat that parallel there. Now, this is in Gotham City. We know that. This is in Gotham. And she's clearly, technically, as of this shot, not a patient, obviously, to be wandering around free. And we know from the behind-the-scenes filming that Harleen is actually seen attending the court building that Arthur arrives to to face trial in this same attire. Now, this is important to note, you know, indicating that at face value, she's no longer a patient at Arkham. Yet we know that she's also attended this court building with all those protesters present in one of her variations of the Harley Quinn look, showing that there is multiple scenes being shot which feeds into that whole what is the reality of the situation here. Or perhaps, of course, you could tell me, you know, the more accurate way to look at this particular scene here is that maybe she hasn't been to Arkham yet and you could look at this moment in the teaser as a flashback, a somewhat peek into what Harleen's life was like before arriving at Arkham and first meeting Arthur. But the thing is, guys, those scenes of Harleen attending the Superior Court of Gotham seem to contradict that because she's presented with that newspaper by members of the crowd protesting against Joker at the trial, detailing that she's Joker's new love and showing that she was once an inmate, inferring that she used to be a patient and has since gotten out. Now, of course, this is also a possibility in how we might see Arthur and Harleen meet in Arkham in the movie, and one of my theories has been that perhaps she's already on her way out, whereas Arthur is obviously, you know, only recently in there and will be for a very long time. And of course, you know, going off of that, how handy would it be if I met my girlfriend in here? She's on her way outside and, you know, maybe in that situation, uh, she could help me get free. However, I do need to emphasize these are just very loose theories. Again, with the whole unreliable narration, how would this truly unfold? What scenes are fantasy? You can't really trust anything in these trailers. Now, diving into the whole unreliable perspectives of Joker 2, this is actually where we see in the trailer one of the corridors of Arkham. And you may be like, what's so important about a freaking corridor in Arkham Asylum, Boba? Well, here we see Harleen holding her hand to her head like it's a pistol. Much like we saw Zuzzy Beats's Sophie Dumond and Arthur do in that first movie, of whom is returning as well. By the way, we will be seeing Zuzzy Beats again, which kind of makes me, you know, worry about that character if, if something might happen to her. But either way... What I want to briefly point out here is, notice how Arkham, just like the first movie when we were seemingly in Arthur's unreliable perspective as the scenes unfolded, looks somewhat a bit less clean, I guess you could say, compared to what is viewed as the more accurate depiction at the very end of the first film. So during the first movie, when Arthur goes there to get his mother's records, Arkham State Hospital looks like a fairly worn establishment that hasn't really had any refurbishment for quite a long time. But the thing is, after the main events of the film at the ending scene, Arthur is in the interview room with his new therapist, and it's just like the whole movie up until this moment has been and Arthur recollecting the story so far to her. And then the movie kind of infers that he, he goes on to kill her with those little bloody footprints left behind. But anyway, back to the main point. Yet again, here we are in the thick of Joker 2's plot and the scenes being teased in this trailer, we're back at Arkham once again looking fairly worn, not reflective of that pristine looking hospital at the end of the first movie. Now, this could likely, I'm not saying it is, but it could be showing us how we're once again delved into the perspective of the main characters rather than that of the reality itself. So speaking of delving into that perspective of the main characters, well, we're certainly doing that as the next scene shows us a spotlight shining down on Joker holding a microphone. Now, I know how Joaquin Phoenix sings in James Mangold's Walk the Line. Absolutely love that film. If you haven't seen it, what are you doing? I love Johnny Cash anyway, but Joaquin Phoenix did a great job there singing with Reese Witherspoon, who played June Carter. But I, I am wondering how Arthur Fleck sings. How's, how's that going to go? We have no idea because we didn't actually hear any singing 
in this trailer. More on that in a little bit. But this is when we cut to a scene with inmates watching a movie within Arkham. Two of them being Harleen and Arthur, of course, with Harleen hesitating to touch Arthur right here before saying to him, let's get out of here. And in this moment, I, I do actually think, believe it or not, that it's more of a let's get out of here, like from the movie room rather than that of Arkham itself, even though it's obviously meant to symbolize, hey, let's, let's get out of Arkham. Uh, this is probably when they actually do get out the movie room and they have a bit of fun together. You can clearly tell at this point, Arthur's quite, I, I would say, institutionalized in the regime, so to speak. Hey, I'm in the movie room now. Uh, but then he's like looking at Harleen like, eh? And she might reawaken this somewhat, I guess, rebellious side in Arthur. And yeah, they could have a bit of fun together, bond even more, just like the scenes we see later in the trailer of when Harleen is putting on this, you know, Joker makeup on him somewhere in Arkham. I think it's more leaning into something like that before things get even bigger in the film. I also really just can't wait to see Lady Gaga's portrayal of a very unhinged Harley. I've been saying since day one, I mean, I've been a very vocal supporter of this concept this whole time. It's interesting to see how many people are switching up on the concept of Joker 2 after seeing this trailer. But no, really, Lady Gaga is also another aspect of which I've been very confident in. I felt that she's been more than capable to pull off this role, especially with her, you know, musical talent. But back to the unhinged Harley, this is the thing. There seems to be quite a range of the casual Harleen wandering the city to a completely delving into madness as you would expect portrayal at times in the trailer. Now even scenes like this of Harley stretching her eyes down as her makeup seems to be applied in the mirror somewhat parallels how Arthur did the same thing into a mirror except when he was stretching his smile. I do feel like there, there's some similarities going on there and we also see Arthur being asked later on in the trailer by Steve Coogan's character who appears to be one of his doctors saying, tell us, what's changed Arthur? And Arthur says and mockingly, well, what's changed? I'm not alone anymore. That's what we should be talking about. So obviously we're going to get some maybe, I don't know, therapy scenes, but I also do wonder and this is a bit of a random theory here, if this is an early scene in the movie where perhaps Arthur's changed his mind about wanting to tackle his case, so to speak, and might want to go to trial at the Superior Court of Gotham, whereas previously maybe as of the ending events of the first movie, he just accepted his lot and wasn't really going to fight it. So the doctor's now like, well, what's changed, Arthur? And he's like, well, I'm not alone now. I've got Harleen. I want to attend the court. Maybe she's talked him into trying to stand up against it, even though that might be pretty hard to do, given the very obvious crimes. But this would play into all of the court scenes that you've been seeing in the trailers and even in the behind the scenes filming. But more on those scenes a little bit later that we see in the trailer as it is a pretty big moment when it comes to Joker's escape. And so up next we see a stage, a big stage in the background there with Joker and Harleen dancing with a giant moon matching up to actually one of the photos that Todd Phillips teased if you want a bigger kind of shot of this location in black and white. Now they parallel this scene with a moment of Harley and Arthur dancing again except this time, well you know they're dancing outside of the Arkham grounds as inmates at this point while well, Arkham, if you can probably tell, is on fire, just, just casually on fire in the background. Now this does also match up to other shots in the trailer later on where it appears that Harleen and Arthur are running out of Arkham from the inside where it's also on fire. So it looks like, uh, let's just say, I have got a wild guess that these two start the fire and this could be another attempt to escape because again, there's a couple versions of escape, I believe. One where there's a moment like this with Arkham on fire, but then there's also Arthur Arthur being escorted out of Arkham Asylum to Gotham City to face trial at the Superior Court, and then there's an escape opportunity there. So possibly more than one escape in this movie. And I bring it up again, which is real. That's that's the question, isn't it? There's so much flair with the various scenes that we get teased with in this trailer, from the massive stage set pieces we see in the trailer of the moon, to the Joker and Harley show, to the Arkham Hotel set piece, the seeming wedding of Joker and Harley with none other than Gary from the first movie as Joker's seeming best man. Uh, and it looks like, you know, after all, Joker remembers those who are kind to him, as he said to Gary when he let him go after killing Randall in his apartment. But either way, all of these scenes that you're seeing must be a shared delusion of theirs. Or, you know, even when they're in this bar with a band and backing singers and Harleen just throwing it down with her dancing to the music. I suspect, again, 
this is, or a majority of this, is them in a fantasy moment rather than them actually in Gotham City, having changed clothes after having escaped and then taking over and just having a blast where things get pretty murderous by the looks of other scenes in the trailer. I'm not ruling it out, given that there will be an escape of some sorts, but I do think a lot of these are inflated and could be perhaps, you know, balanced with real scenes, but maybe could be vastly over-exaggerated in terms of, I guess you could say, the decor and what they're looking at it like versus where they actually are and what they're doing. But again, I, I just love the looks of what we're getting of both Harley and Joker here, the different colored suits from the white wedding suit that Joker is in, feeling very Dark Knight Returns-esque. It's, it's just great. Now, since we're briefly talking about the whole music aspect, well, Todd Phillips commented on this at CinemaCon saying, we've never really talked about it like that with regards to it being a musical, but it's a movie where music is an essential element. And to me, it doesn't veer too far from the first film. Yeah, Arthur is weird and aloof, but he has music in him. Honestly, I do love what I'm seeing here. I feel like these aspects of the movie seem really fun in the Joker and Harley theatrical-esque sense. And I even like the label here of the Hotel Arkham, just in terms of how they may even just try and view it as a hotel that they stay at rather than a place that they're, I guess, imprisoned at. It's more of a hotel destination of choice for their romantic flair getaway, and that's the way they have a bit of copium about it, I suppose. And that maybe they love the fun house that is Arkham slash Hotel Arkham. Now, ladies and gentlemen, up next is where things get insanely interesting in the trailer. And we get a scene that I feel like a lot of people have seen by now, even with behind the scenes filming, and where we see Arthur in a dusty suit, running down the streets of Gotham, being pursued by two Joker followers. This actually directly connects to other scenes that we see in the trailer of Arthur Fleck being taken to the Superior Court of Gotham, escorted by police here, to face crimes he committed in the first movie. And this all makes sense with regards to like a timeline of things, obviously. Now, this is where those protesters are. And we know that Arthur escapes because, uh, well, he, he's running down the street in that very same suit he arrives in. It's just a dustier version. Now, why, you may be thinking, is it a dustier version? Well, we get to see the very explosion in this trailer from the inside of of the courtroom with the next scene immediately after showing Arthur kind of getting flung from the blast of the explosion, which is how he gets to the position of running down the street in Gotham and then disappearing into the city. But you also have a couple of uh, Joker admirers. I mean, think about how much they like love him. That's why they're chasing after him. They're not chasing after him to like apprehend him and take him back. They're more just like, Joker, we love you. And they just keep chasing him. But maybe it's a bit overwhelming for Arthur at the time. Now, we also know, thanks to these protester signs, that Harvey Dent is prosecuting Arthur at this trial. So I, I do want to chuck in the obvious ob observation here and say that it would be a pretty cool reference if this explosion disfigured half of his face. And maybe there's a news report saying the district attorney is, is in the hospital because he's got serious life-threatening injuries to half of his face and two face and... I don't know. Maybe that will happen. Maybe it won't. But either way, Harvey Dent is here. I don't expect him to be a major, 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 major player, but it makes sense if Arthur's being tried at court. Hey, let's just chuck in Harvey as district attorney to deal with this case of Arthur Fleck, the Joker. But overall, this does make sense to the plot. Uh, it is a great opportunity for Arthur to escape. I mean, think about it. He's been escorted outside of Arkham to go to trial, and that's a lot better than being walled in in an asylum. And obviously, you've got an explosion as a getaway. You've got a distraction of a bunch of Joker followers to help mask and escort your escape, and then you disappear into Gotham. I mean, it's it's brilliant, even if he does probably end up back in Arkham by the end of the movie. And also, it does seem that this trial is being televised, so it looks as though Gotham will once again be witnessing something go down with the clown once again, like they did on the Murray Franklin talk show. And uh, yeah, obviously, this is the core and the trial that we see Harleen attend in the different outfits that she arrives in. Again, 
Which reality is real? I don't know. But there is another version that doesn't seem to be reflected in reality here, and that's another musical set piece by the looks of it that reflects the Superior Court scenes, with Arthur and Harley doing the Joker dance down the Superior Court steps, as if they're celebrating, with even one of the papers saying, free on all charges. Now, again, this is probably a wishful thinking scenario that plays out as a warped version in their head heads where they imagine that Arthur did get out free, but this is definitely a set version of the courthouse stairs with different posters from the protesters just reflecting a false outcome. How do we know that? Well, you can tell that this is a set, that it's not like daylight, it's all black behind there. I'm pretty sure that Arthur didn't get out considering there's a bloody explosion that leads to him escaping and running down the streets of Gotham. So again, this is a perfect demonstration of how it's just a um, wishful fantasy of Arthur being free. Um, but that, yeah, let's just say that probably doesn't happen legally that is. Now I did see some people saying that in this fantasy version of them dancing down the courthouse steps, if Harley could have an ever so slight pregnancy bump here, I mean I don't know, I don't know, I just wanted to chuck it out there, but if that was the case, I, it would match up to one of Harleen's many fantasies that she actually has had in the source material as well, so you could argue that could be paired into this scene, just wanted to put it in there. Now some other interesting parts in this trailer that I think could be a mixed bag of delusion or fantasy yet mixed in with reality is when we see Harley point this gun at Arthur in his Joker attire. Now you can see that there's a man behind her who is likely dead as he's just kind of flumped out cold on the table and then you can even see her wipe blood on her face to form a smile, likely from that man who she may have just shot. Now I say delusion mixed in reality as per kind of what I teased earlier because it, it makes me wonder if some of these murderous scenes could be in such a way and where they do reflect people they're killing in real life in whatever location they're in, but it's just dressed up in a way that their surroundings are so over-exaggerated and not necessarily set in reality or while the deaths are, if that makes sense. Now, I'm not sure, but it looks like there's evidence files and possibly an evidence box on the desk there. So I'm not sure if this is meant to be like a fantasy version of the inside of the courtroom uh, or another location. Another scene that I found very, very intriguing is Harleen on the streets here, throwing a trash can into the TV store window. And on the screens of the TVs that are on sale is of Arthur Fleck laughing with bars behind him. So he's seemingly in Arkham. Now, I'm just thinking, how does this fit? You know, is, is he taunting her? Does she feel taunted like she's in his head? What is she lashing out at the man she loves? But that would obviously, you know, play into the somewhat abusive relationship. So a lot of this is playing out in this trailer is this love and infatuation, this fantasy, this adventure of them both. But we can't forget that other side of the relationship of Harleen Quinzel and the Choker. Um, and this could be a little teaser at somewhat Harley lashing out at the idea of how kind of mentally screwed over by him she is. But again, this is in the real life of her on the streets of Gotham as a free person. So like, it kind of warps with my mind of, okay, but what is the real timeline of events here? And then again, even with the final scene, Arthur is behind the interview room glass with Harleen putting the red lipstick smile on the glass on the other side, inferring Harleen is not an inmate in this situation. I, it's very trippy trying to figure this out with regards to, is she free sometimes? Isn't, isn't she? I don't know. But whoever thought of this scene, by the way, it, I, I love it. The lens focus adjustment at the end must have taken so many attempts to get right. It's just so well done. And I know a lot of people take the piss out of, oh, Joker is so artistic, and but no, really. This is like a really cool thing with regards to just the way they approach this and put the red smile on Arthur through the glass through something as simple as lipstick and lining up that shot and then adjusting the lens. You know, just like the first film, it looked great. I, I, this one looks fantastic. And I think that's more or less everything that I wanted to dig into with regards to the specifics. Now, obviously they didn't focus on too much of the musical aspects. And I mean, they did, if you know what I mean, but we didn't get a glimpse of like, 
the, the singing per se. And maybe that's reserved for the future trailers. I think with this one, what they wanted to do, knowing that some people have stigmatized, well, A, the very idea of getting a sequel to the first film, but then hearing that, oh, it's a musical, what they wanted to do is probably lean into how, oh, see, no, this is as per what Todd Phillips said at CinemaCon, it doesn't veer too far from the first movie. It's still a story with Joaquin Phoenix being Joker again, and there's a narrative unfolding. It's not bursting into song and dance every two seconds. I think they wanted to get that message out there before they start to market and advertise how, hey, here's a musical number that we might get in future trailers. I think they did the smart thing in terms of, I'm not against that at all, I'm looking forward to it, but for a lot of people who were hesitant, when they see this, they might be switching up their opinions because they're like, oh, it didn't look as bad as I thought it was going to, right? But slowly over time, with more and more teasers, I bet they'll ease those people who are very hesitant about the idea of Arthur and Harleen singing into the movie a bit more to the point of before they know it they might just be very okay with it but guys this has been an insanely long rambly video very in-depth i hope you liked it let me know your thoughts on my thoughts my observations my theories some of the connections we made but i am loving what i'm seeing let me know your impressions did you doubt the sequel but are you now more on board uh, are you just loving it anyway like i kind of was or on the other hand are some of you like nope still don't like it whatsoever i'll be keeping an eye on that comment section if you made it this far would really appreciate a like it lets youtube know hey people are watching this very long video so maybe we should post it out there to other people consider subscribing for more updates just like this but until next time ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you fellow jokers in the next video. Goodbye.